In this video, I'm going to introduce the concept of partial fractions. Now, in the previous videos, I've been emphasising um, polynomial division as an excellent tool. But, we can only write something in an equivalent form, um, like what we were doing beforehand, when the order of the polynomial on the bottom of the fraction is the same as or less than the one on the top. If you've got a problem like this, then what we have is we've got a quadratic on the bottom of the fraction, but we've got a constant term on the top. So the order is such that it's greater on the bottom than it is on the top, so I can't use polynomial division. But I still want to be able to write it as an, in an equivalent form. Now, what we can do is use something called partial fractions. We can write this as partial fractions. And what it's saying is that this is equivalent to some number a over x minus 4 plus some number b over x plus 1. And I need to work out what that a and that b are. Now this equivalency is very important, and I'll come through to that in a minute. Now what we're going to do first is multiply both sides by the x minus 4 and the x plus 1 at the same time. If I multiply both sides by both brackets, then on the left hand side I'm going to get 3, and on the right hand side, when I multiply this fraction by both x minus 4 and x plus 1, the x minus 4s will cancel and I just get left with x plus 1. For this fraction, the x plus 1s will cancel and I'll just be left with x minus 4. Now this is where the equivalency comes in. Um, because I'm saying that one side is equivalent to the other, this must be true for all values of x. Not just one value of x, or two, but all values of x. So because I'm saying that it's equivalent, that means I'm allowed to choose values of x, and I haven't changed anything. So if I, I use uh, x equals 4, for example, if I let x equals 4, and why would I choose x equals 4? Well, because I know that that bracket will subsequently disappear. 4 minus 4 is 0, so that eliminates that bracket away and simplifies the problem for me. Because I'm going to be left with 3 is equal now, not equivalent to, is equal to a lots of 4 plus 1. So that means that we have 5a equals 3, so a is 3 fifths. So if I now go back to this line, I now say, well, I've tried x is 4, so the way to get rid of that bracket would be to try x equals minus 1. So I would have 3 is equal to, well, that's gone, okay, because that's zero, that bracket is 0. I have b lots of minus 1 take away 4. Well, minus 1 take away 4 is minus 5, so I've got minus 5b is 3. So that means that b is minus 3 fifths. So I can now say that the original rational function, 3 over x minus 4, x plus 1, is the same as, excuse me, red pen, 3 fifths over x minus 4, minus 3 fifths over x plus 1, or plus minus 3 fifths, however which way around you want to write it. So obviously this doesn't look very nice, but it's much easier to work with if you don't then simplify it. If you do want to simplify it, you can then write that as 3 over 5x minus 20, take away 3 over 5x. Uh, plus 5. You could do it like that if you wanted to. But 
if you maintain it at that line, then that will be fine. So this is the process of partial fractions. And make sure you can go from that line to that line, because from there on, it's just substituting values in to work out what the missing letters are.